attracted immigrants newly arriving into the UK. In the 50s, it was the turn of the Bangladeshi community. Well, I'm sorry, but you couldn't come to Brick Lane without buying one, could you? A sorry? Sorry? The vast majority of people living in the East End are white, nearly 60% with the Bangladeshi community making up a quarter of the area's population. The amazing mix of cultures and ethnic origins is probably the most visible down the markets. Two nine on a go, two for... Yes, sir. Have a look, have a look. Ask the price. <laughs> no, seriously, if you wore them shoes, I would marry you tomorrow. If you wore these shoes, I would divorce you tomorrow. Anyone a pound? Right, girls, don't be shy, Mummy wasn't. Anybody else need a good service in here? We're in Petco Lane Market, and this is where I used to come when I was a little girl. I used to come here when you were first allowed to go shopping, so I could buy a cheap T-shirt. It wasn't very far away from where I live. I'm just going to go and see some of the storeholders. Have a bit of a laugh. A bit of cockney banter. Here you go, lovely jubbly. This is a real like, old-fashioned market. Our markets always were, isn't it? Well, that's right. But it's the characters, Patsy. It's people mm. like myself. The colour, the razzmatazz that make it, you know? I am 16 stone, sir. I'm a fat old son. Not so much of the old, you. I used to work on a stall. And, uh, you know, it's quite... When he used to say, oh, have a laugh, you know, shout out, get them to come to the store. And I used That's to be right. quite embarrassed. Even being an actress, I mean, you'd think that I wouldn't be embarrassed, but I used to find it quite embarrassing, shouting out, can I always tell sweatshirts? You know as well as me, you've got plenty of front in this yeah. game, right? You've got plenty of front, you can do whatever you want. Did you hear about Madonna? She's had a touching reunion, her legs are together for the first time. There's so many different ethnic minorities now around the East End. You know that it's Bangladeshis have moved in here. We've got a lot of Turkish traders, we've got a lot of Kosovans, Jewish. I mean, we've got all sorts of people. But the great thing, the beauty is how we all mix together. Yeah. Now, I'm going to introduce you to a very good friend of mine in a minute, okay. Bira. I'm going to show you, he's a character next door. He's the only Jewish Indian that I know. My boy, my life. And my life already. <laughs> we have an onion bargy bagel every morning. <laughs> I never lend this man money, Patsy. Do you know what? because you end up playing hide and seek. Hide and seek. Yeah, <laughs> he goes hiding, I've got to find a seek. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've been doing the markets 37 years, long time. One of the first dark faces there. A lot of the synagogues are closed round here now. They're turning um, into mosques. Uh, they're mosques yeah, now. They are exactly. Yeah, but a lot of the Jewish people have moved out to the suburbs now and Bira's family have moved we've in. Moved we've moved in. out. We've Bira's family has moved taken in. Over. This is my home and this is where I belong. And one day this is where I will die. True East Ender. God bless, darling. Time Magazine. Yeah, look at that, look at that. Well, I've just been to Petticoat Lane where it's very multicultural and just as a market was when I was a little girl. But now we're in Brick Lane and this has always been the same since I was little as well. Very Bangladeshi. And that's why now they've called it Bangladesh. <laughs> Come in, enter this place, you will never want to leave. I welcome everybody, all the customers, please come and try us. My beautiful lady, <laughs> you won't be disappointed. <laughs> Curry heaven. You can come in Brickland, be in Asia and eat Indian real food. No need to fly to Dhaka or somewhere else. This is Bangla town, this is Bangladeshi culture. Here, white people come and eat curry. Cauliflower bhaji, yeah? Lovely, thank you, yeah. Why I do decide to cook curry crow course? Because white people can eat a lot of different dishes, but they don't know how to cook. First, we will make some uh, kakoras and some onion bhaji. Anybody can make at home and easy. I couldn't do this thing with the knife quickly enough. Oh, you did, I'm sure I would learn. Slow. I'm just too slow. You made it like this. Just do it. I've always really liked Indian food and I've wanted to learn how to do it. I'm, after four years, I'm going back to America and I thought I better take some skills back with me because I don't think I'll find another brick lane in America anywhere. Mix it together. Cardiff Day, I'll mix it together. Yeah, sorry. I think 
he's very demanding. It's like uh, he just goes away and expects me to have this done, and I'm afraid I'm just not going to get quite right. No, 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 no. This one, then you mix together. Okay, mix together. Yeah. Good. The thing about working with him is that I can't understand a word he's saying, really. Asians are often criticized in this country for not obeying the letter of the law. But the fact is that on the subcontinent, there is a different culture of obedience. People are more relaxed, officials are more relaxed. And with a little bit of common sense, a little bit of give and take, a working equilibrium can be reached. That's my car! Well, how the bloody hell am I supposed to get out? Oi! Traffic warden! This is car! Wake up! If this is your car, move your car! How do I get out? God, bloody Asian! Here we are in St. Luke's Church in East London to learn some Bollywood dancing. Sam Fox is a famous Bollywood film star. You're joking. Traffic jam. Traffic jam. We're going to be learning some dancing today. Of course, we've got a nice new member of our class today. So say a big hello to Patsy. Hi. So are they musicals, all the films? All of them. Isn't that right? Most of you guys have seen all your Bollywood films. That's what they enjoy watching. And the songs are so important because if the songs do well in a film, the film's a blockbuster. It's a hit. <laughs> Have you ever done some Bollywood dance before? No, I don't think I'll be able to do that. It looks too complicated. <laughs> Here we go. I really love you. Go. One, two, three, and pull. हमको बंदूक दिखा रहे हैं तो अच्छी बात है। They do when they watch Hollywood <laughs> films. They go and learn the dialogues because they love their superstars. They really, you know, they're their idols. So they sit there learning all these dialogues, and then they come back in the class and show us. Look what I'm doing. Mimic them. Yeah. <laughs> Why did you come here? I like dancing and I like acting, and I think this would make this would actually boost my confidence up. Do you so think you it? need any more confidence? Well, I think I need a lot. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> Seem very confident to me. <laughs> If I wanted to go and see a Bollywood film, and they subtitled those, say, if um, we wanted to go and see one. Definitely. When you watch them on television, you'll always have the subtitles there. <laughs> yes, you have to eat a lot. You have to eat a mash. OK, boys and girls, we are making chapati now. So welcome to make your own chapati. <laughs> I'm showing how to make rice. You do this one. Do yeah. You? What? Yeah. So you want to cover it? I'll show you everything. All right. Okay. She she's making rice. I think these guys are cooking must have um, you know nerves of steel because it sounds like he's shouting at them half the time. But um, I don't know. They don't seem to mind. Now we are making mixed curry for the sauce. Next week, I'm going to go make jelly deal. Oh, no, no, no. no. Have, you have you ever eaten a jelly deal? No, I've never eaten a jelly deal in my life. <laughs> 
Thank you. Enjoy your meal and try at home. I'm the best. That's it. Like Prings, 80% of the curry houses on Brick Lane aren't Indians, they're Bangladeshis. Asian bands with an East End heritage is Joy. My dad had a shop in Brick Lane over 15 to 20 years ago and sold traditional Bengali music. And basically, me and my brother got into mixing that because we were influenced by Western electronic music, being born and brought up in this country. So we just kind of put the both together, and I think it's a new British Asian music, or whatever people want to call it. Joy, thank you very much. Asian Dub Foundation too have an East End pedigree and have used their music to focus their anger on racism. Asian Dub Foundation uh, originally um, was a project that came from uh, Dr Das, the bass player. A lot of work we were doing was very influenced by the absolute disgust and outrage that many young people, particularly young black and Asian people, were feeling of, um, of just not being able to tolerate just the racial attacks every day the abuse, you know, and uh, the fear. And yet we had skinheads running down Brick Lane, smashing up Asian shops. We shot the last video for the song New Way, New Life in, in Green Street up in the East End. This is the vibrant side of the East End. We just showed it as it was and it looks like a, it looks like it's all been staged out of these people dancing around and whatever totally spontaneous. People just heard the dull beat and they just got up and started dancing. People running around, they loved it. This is what we're about. It's not just a band. We've come out of a different environment. We didn't just set up to become a rock and roll band. Despite the undenied success of Asian immigration in the UK, there are still issues of language and communication, especially in places like this. Healthcare, particularly for sensitive older Asian men such as this. Oh, namaste, Uncle Ji. Namaste. Aap angrezi bolte hain? Thodi thodi. Um, आपको ऐसे लगता है कि बात करने की problem होता है doctor के साथ? हाँ, junior doctor के साथ. Oh, मैं आपको पूछ सकती हूँ. आपको तकलीफ क्या है कोई तकलीफ नहीं है मैं तो खुद कंसल्टेंट हूँ एस टी क्लिनिक में और चार बजे आपने मुझसे मिलना है इन रियलिटी लैंग्वेज इज सो मच ऑफ अ प्रॉब्लम फॉर द बांग्लादेशी कम्युनिटी बट पॉवर्टी एंड ड्रग यूज आर टू फायर आर मेड फ्रॉम द न्यूज पेपर Living in an area like this here, what chance have you got? Eh? I know exactly. Well, you've got one bog and you've got no garden, you've got stairs, you've got no lift. I think a lot of our people don't stand up really. They don't fuss enough. They think they still got that mentality. Yeah, look, we're here in their country. You know, we're lucky to be here. We're lucky to be living in this dump, so we're fine. I mean, it's a real problem around here, isn't it? You've got kids as young as seven and eight oh, no, taking terrible. it, you know? So frightening. How do they fund the drugs habit? Well, they turn the crown, don't they? They'll nick things from their house to start off with, and then when their parents lock everything up, and they'll go in the streets. And we never want in the East End has their car broken into at least once a week. Yeah. <laughs> so part of it. With um, the Bengali kids, the drug problem seems bigger. 
you're talking about this area, it's definitely it's a Bengali theme, simply because there's Bengalis here. The government claim that only 7% of drug users within the East End of Bangladeshi. The local authority says it's more like 22%, but whatever the statistics, drug use in the East End is still a huge problem. You don't really see a lot of Asian kids getting into drug clinics and no, drug, you know, it's treatment true, centers. It's true. I think our people haven't quite grasped the concept of treatment. Mm. Right? They don't want to treat someone. They want to just cure them straight up. And like, they get rid of them. What they do, they send them back home. They send them to Bangladesh. And they're back there, their uncles and that will literally tie them up to a bedpost for months and months. And this person is going through hell. There are nine drop-in clinics for drug users in the whole of Tower Hamlets. Only one is specifically set up to help the Bangladeshi community. But I think um, the big difference between the old generation, yeah, where, where our uncles and dads came over here, yeah. yep. they had no money, mm -hmm. so they wanted to get out of this shit, didn't they? Yeah. But the kids this generation, yeah, they're thinking this ain't too bad, and they're not going to go out and work. Yeah. They're not going to buy the houses in, well, can't afford it, can they? Yeah. They're not all TV stars. <laughs> They could be if they're turning about on the street doing drugs. Yeah, if they get chances. <laughs> Do you think the Bengali community feel English? I don't think they feel English, but they definitely feel British. I think the old generation, the people in their 50s and 60s, they're kind of like still feeling they've got, they've got one foot in Bangladesh mm. and they've got another foot in the East End. They'll always stay in the East End. If they go to Bangladesh, they'll be for about six months, seven months, right. they'll always come back. I was speaking to one of my travel agent mates here, yeah? and he was saying everyone who goes back home, they always get a return ticket. Very few people get a one-way ticket. So we always come back. We yeah. love this place. The East End has always had a tradition of producing great boxers. Now the Asian community are keeping that going by producing world champion kickboxers. and we were trying to kind of get it off the ground and everything. Uh, you know, I was more interested in the kids coming here because there's nothing really for them to do, hanging around the streets and the drugs around That's here true, and everything. Yeah. And I just thought it'd be nice for the kids to get them off the streets and little boys and a bit rough and yeah. they want to do a bit of boxing. We used to get into fights all the time when mm. we were kids and stuff. And yeah, have you I always know, trained since you was a little kid? Yeah, I've been training since I was 15 because my parents won't allow me to, you know, do martial arts before that. Why not? Well, they thought we would have, you know, would get into trouble even more. Well, while I was in school, there was a lot of trouble with racism and stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was, I used to go to a school, there was only 17 Asian kids. The kids in school, they were getting away by bullying them. Mm -hmm. So when I was about 15, 16, I used to sneak out, hide and, and train. And when we were growing up, there were like Asian kids and they kept in their little group and yeah. then there were white kids. There was, I mean, you know, you can't get away from it. But I mean, I grew up in a household where there was no racism whatsoever, yeah. you know, which I really respect that now and everything. But I know that there were certain people around here that it wasn't like that for them. You know, I think that was the problem with Asians when they were like hardly mixing with a lot mm. of people and stuff. And the whole thing is now, People are much more friendly, I mean, they start commanding a bit of respect. Ali's not the only champion. Hot on his heels is Mushud Ahmed. Our kickboxing's taken off in a big way. There's a lot more Asian kids involved in kickboxing now than there were before. So why did you want to get into kickboxing then? Well, I think it's inbred. Once you're growing up in East London, I mean, it's, it's not the nicest place to live in, but at the same time, it's not the worst, you know, especially going to a school f with about a thousand boys, all full of testosterone, full of hormones, kids going through puberty, you know, they're always going to find something to do, someone to pick on. So do you think you'll move from the East End ever? No, I don't think, I mean, even if I do move and get property elsewhere, I'll still be coming back to East London. Mm. That's where I was born and brought up and... You do, you always feel like you're here, you? Yeah, you do. Like Pat's getting old as well, we need someone to carry on the legacy. Getting old, Pat. I think I'll just go and kick his head in for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
spent a lot of time in there and I love kickboxing. It's good training and I'm pleased that it's doing well for him. I only wish that uh, it was doing that well when we earned it. But there you go, <laughs> I'm bitter. In a society where money is God and possessions are worshipped, it is Asians that keep alive the notion that life can be simple and frugal, as you can see here from this genuine inner city farm. <laughs> you can almost sense the burden of material gain being lifted. Oh, bloody hell! I've just got pink shit all over my Gucci new buck loafers! Oh, me, oh, you Asian women have a much lower profile in both music and sport, but one woman is trying to make a difference in the arts. Her name is Sanchita Islam. You know, you go to some galleries, it's really sterile, it's really static, it's really like dead. And you got all these like 